All right, so we are going to start with the areas of regions in the the plane, but I'm going to start with with doing a review of something something else here. So let's say that you had the integral from negative 2 to 3 of x dx, and I know that you've definitely, hopefully seen that one before, and the, the graph of it looked like this, so here is negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it looks like this, and here was the the region that you want it to, to find, right? So, if you remember that the uh, what was going on is that this this area down here was actually area was one half times the base, which was two times the two. So that would be actually uh, that would be what was that? That was be two, and then the area of this one is one half times base of three and height of three, so that's nine over two. But then this integral, because this was below the curve, it was actually a a negative two plus nine over two, which is five over two. All right, but if you wanted the area and not the and not the integral, then then you would do this a little bit, a little bit differently. Five over two. Okay, so how would you do this differently? So, this is actually what they call a a composite. This is actually called a a composite region because if you want it to find the the area of the the whole region, you would have to find the area of this plus the area of this. So. So this is actually the the total area would be the area from the x equals the negative two over to the zero, the part that's below the curve, and then plus the area from the the zero over to the three. All right, so x equals zero to three, the part that's above the curve. All right, now. What you really need to notice is that th this this line, and I'll I'll draw it right here. But if I extend this line here, this was the y equals x. So that was actually this this function right here. All right, now this is actually I'll show you right here. This is actually right here. The other part that this is bounded by is actually the x-axis, but that has an equation and it's y equals zero. Alright, so then if I want to find the area from negative two to zero, then it's the integral from x equals negative two to x equals zero, and then I need to subtract the the equation that's the what I call the top curve minus the equation of what I call the bottom curve. And so the top curve here the, is actually the, the curve that's the orange one is the y equals zero. And the one that is bounding the, the triangle here on the bottom is the y equals x. So from, from negative two to zero, you have zero minus the, the x. And then from the zero to three, the, the curve at the top of the triangle is actually x and the curve at the bottom of the triangle is actually the zero. So it's actually x minus zero. All right, so then you still need the dx here. So then zero minus x is negative x. So integral from negative two to zero of negative x dx plus integral from zero to three of x dx. And then here's what happens you find the antiderivative so the antiderivative of negative x is negative x squared over 2 or 1 half 
x squared, and then I'm going to evaluate that from negative 2 to 0. So that's the whole fundamental theorem of calculus part. And then you have plus the integral of x dx, so that will be x squared over 2, and I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 3. All right, so again, this is the whole fundamental theorem of calculus part coming into play here. And then I see that I have to substitute in the 0 for x, so I have negative 0 squared over 2, then minus. All right, and then I substitute in the negative 2 for the x, so negative, negative 2 squared over 2. And then I have plus, so that's this plus. All right, I know that this is a lot of bookkeeping of the negative signs here. So the minus was here because that's what was in the problem. Then you subtract because of the fundamental theorem of calculus and the minus in the problem again. Then the other minus because the 2 was negative. All right, and then plus, and then you have, when you substitute in the 3, 3 squared over 2, then minus the, substitute in the 0, 0 squared over 2. And then what are you left with here? Let me get a, another piece of paper here. I'm left with a, well, negative 0 squared over 2 is 0. Then minus a negative of a negative 2 squared over 2. So that's actually 2. Then plus, and that's 9 over 2. So actually, I think I have room for that. Not 2 plus 9 over 2. So that will be... What is that? Uh, 13 over 2. So that will give you the value of the area. So, so remember that when I actually am finding the area between two curves, I really need to remember this. I need to do the top curve minus the bottom curve. All right, the top minus the bottom. And the reason why I didn't say this before the other day is because the the uh, bottom curve was 0 over here. And so similarly, I know that 0 minus the x would be negative x. So that's why this is actually one of those cases where not knowing that sort of would make this problem look like it is a lot easier than it really is. But then if you go and change the curve from something that's not zero, like in the next one here, then then you would say that you probably do want to know that this is the rule for finding the area versus, say, finding the integral, because the area is 13 over 2, but the integral is 5 over 2. All right. So, again, if you have any questions, please ask, but the answer is exactly the, the same. You would still get that the area is 13 over 2, or the integral is uh, 5 over 2. So this is why you really have to pay attention to which curve is the top curve and which curve is the bottom curve. So here, here is the theorem for this. All right, so the area bounded between two curves is the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So this is going to be the curve on the top, and this will be the curve on the oops, the curve on the bottom. All right. So try to remember that this is what I am I'm talking about here: the the top minus the bottom. So the main thing that you will need to do when you are are doing these is actually draw the graph. So before you saw that I, I drew the graph and that was fine, but here I need to draw the graph also. So if I want to find the area, let me see, the area between the graphs of x equals four minus y squared and x equals a y minus two. Now, the, the one thing that you do need to notice is that this is all already solved for x, and and these are in terms of um, of x. All right, so you actually need something that's going to be in terms of possibly the the y here. All right, so just try to remember that as well, unless you actually want to go ahead and solve these for with respect to x, it doesn't really matter. So, again, when I say the top, I mean the one with the larger, the larger y value 
and then minus the one with the smaller y value. All right, now, sometimes, again, if, if the equations are solved for x instead of y, then you want, say, the area from, uh, is the integral from c to d of, say, f of y minus g of y dy, so that the functions are in terms of y instead of in terms of x. All right, and then this would end up being the, instead of top minus bottom, the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The one that is going to be the one on the right, all right, the right minus the one on the left. So in other words, what I mean is I want the, the larger x value, all right, the larger x value minus the smaller x value. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph these and I am going to probably use in terms of y since these are already in terms of y. x all right, is equal to something in terms of y. So let's go ahead and graph these. So if I have x is equal to 4 minus y squared, then I can make a little bit of a table here. And then if I I know what the, let's say I, I, I know what the, uh, well, y is. If y is 0, then x is 4. And if y is, say, uh, 1, then x is 3. And if y is actually, what is that? Uh, 2, x is 0. And if y is 3, then x is negative 5. I don't know if that will actually help me too much, but it, it might. And if x is equal to y minus 2, then if the y is 0, then x is negative 2. If y is 1, then x is negative 1. If y is 2, then x is 0. And if y is 3, x is 1. All right, so that might actually help me a little bit, but what I really need to know is where these actually enter intersect so I know where the boundary lines of the graph are are going to be so although that might help me in graphing these like if I I look at this let me show you real quickly what I mean so if I I graph these this one has a point at one two three four zero and then this one has a point at three one and then at zero two and at negative five one two three four five negative five three and i see that it is going out in uh, this is going out in in this direction right but what this doesn't tell me though is that what happens if, if y is negative all right so the so there are some other points here but Let's just say that it's, uh, because this is a parabola, a negative y squared plus 4, it's symmetric, right? So this one I actually can graph fairly easily just by symmetry. So there should be a point at 0, negative 2, then at negative 5, negative 3, and it looks something like this. All right, now for this other curve here, it's x equals y minus 2. So there's a point at negative 2, 0, so that's right here then at negative 1, 1, then at 0, 2, and then at 1, 3. So then if I look carefully here, I can see that one of the points is actually a clear what it is. It's 0, 2, right? So one of the points is 0, 2. And then the other point, I, I probably need to find what that point is because I need to actually find the area that is enclosed by these two these two regions here, right? All right, so that's the area I'm trying to find. So I need to find what that that boundary point is. And this point right here is clearly, what is it? One, two, what did I say? Four, zero, right? So what is that point? Well, I can find that intersection point fairly easily here. So let's just go ahead and, oh, that marker is not any good. All right, so let's go ahead and find the intersection point. 
So since these were both equal to the x, I'm going to set them equal to each other. So 4 minus y squared is equal to y minus 2. And then add the y squared. So 4 is y squared plus y minus 2. And then subtract the 4. So 0 is y squared plus y minus 6. And then I can factor this into y plus 3, y minus uh, uh, 2. And so if I set these actually equal to 0, then I get that y could be negative 3 or y could be 2. So this was actually one of the spots where y was equal to 2. And then the spot where y is equal to negative 3, actually I know was at, at, well, because this is symmetric, I knew it was at 5, negative 3. So this is 5, negative 3. All right, so now, because this is solved for, this is actually solved for x's, I need to figure out what is the larger x value and then minus the smaller x value. All right, so this, this parabola, the equation was x equals 4 minus y squared. And then this line here, the equation was x equals y minus 2. So if I look at the graph at this point of the shaded region, well, actually, for all points of the shaded region, the parabola is to the right of the, the line. All right, so that's what you need to keep in mind is that for, for every point in the shaded region, then this, this line right here is actually the, the uh, left side boundary of the, the region. So that means that the, the point on the line actually had a smaller x value than the point on the the uh, parabola. All right. So that means all I need to do then is go ahead and find the area here. So the area is going to be, so let me go ahead and write this down for you. So the area is going to be all right, so that will be integral from, all right, c to d of f of y minus g of y dy. So these need to be the y values. So in the in this region here, the, the lowest y value is the negative 3. And then as I, I go up the, up the region, the highest y value is a, a 2. All right, so this region... The y values go from negative 3 up to, to 2. So I will have the integral from the integral from negative 3 to 2. So these are actually these are actually y values. Alright, so these are these are y values because this is with respect to to y. Alright, and then the the curve on the the right was the was the parabola so we have 4 minus y squared and then minus the curve on the left which was the the line so y minus 2 dy and then all you have to do from there is go ahead and find the integral so if I I do that then I have integral from negative 3 to 2 let's simplify this distribute so we have 4 minus y squared minus y plus 2 dy. 4 plus 2 is 6. So we have integral from negative 3 to 2 of, uh, I'll just rewrite it, negative y squared minus y plus 6 dy. And then I'll find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative for this one will be, well, that's if I add the 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, negative y to the third over 3, then minus the same thing here, y squared over 2, and then plus 6y, evaluate it from negative 3 to 2. Then I use the fundamental theorem of calculus, so I have the, well, the, the capital F of y, the antiderivative evaluated at 2 minus the antiderivative evaluated at negative 3. So I take the 2, I substitute it in here, 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 then subtract, and then I substitute in the negative 3 here, 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 and then I figure out what the final result should be. So 
negative 2 to the third over 3 minus 2 squared over 2 plus 6 times 2 minus negative negative 3 to the third over 3 minus what will that be negative 3 squared over 2 plus 6 times negative 3 and then what will this be this will be uh, negative 8 thirds minus 4 over 2 plus 12 minus a uh, positive 27 over 3 then minus 9 over 2 minus 18 so then if I simplify this a little bit further here what do I what do I have here what will this be this 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 is uh, yeah so what will this end up being I I have no idea what something uh, so so negative 8 over 3 so what will this end up being uh, negative 8 over 3 all right so yeah so these both have a denominator of 3 so that will be negative 8 over 3 and then remember to distribute the negative here so uh, minus 27 over 3 then uh, the plus the negative 4 over 2 minus a negative 9 over 2 so plus 9 over 2 then plus 12 minus a negative 18 so plus 18 so this will be negative well well all right so 35 over 3 plus a 5 over 2 then plus a 2030 all right and then if I probably need a common denominator at this point. So if I find a common denominator, this will end up being 6. So times 2 over 2 times 3 over 3 times 6 over 6. So I'm left with negative uh, 70 over 6 plus 15 over 6 plus 180 over 6. I have no idea why I'm not using a a calculator here but anyway it's 125 over 6 so that area is 125 over 6 so that's how I would go ahead and find these just using the the theorems here so let's go ahead and try one more just so that you have the exact idea of what I am talking about here all right, so again, if you have any questions, please just ask, but I, I feel like I don't want to belabor this too much, but I'm looking for the next one. Oh yeah, so page 309, the region bounded by y equals x squared and y equals 6 minus x. So uh, the same thing is happening here that you need to figure out what the graph looks like first but because these are solved for for y you're probably going to want to use the area is the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx where these are going to be x values now all right because this is with respect to x so now Let's go ahead and graph these, but remember it did help me to know where the intersection point was. So let's find the intersection point first. And so uh, y is equal to x squared and y is equal to 6 minus x. So x squared will equal 6 minus x. Then add the x and then subtract the 6. Then you can factor x plus 3, x minus 2 equals 0. Then set each factor equal to 0, so x plus 3 is equal to 0, gives you x is negative 3, and x minus 2 is equal to 0, gives you x is equal to 2. Then go ahead and make sure that you know where the, the y value is then. So x and y is equal to 6 minus x, right? So if x is negative 3, then negative 3 squared is 9, and if x is equal to... 2 then 2 squared is 4 and the same thing here you should get negative 3 9 and 2 4 so there's uh, those are the intersection points at negative 3 9 so negative 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 2 4 1 2 1 2 3 4 and you know that this is a this is a parabola so it actually looks like 
it actually looks like this. And you know the other one is a line. And so that line has to go through those two points right there. So there is my there is my region. All right. So there is my region. So here is the point of negative three nine. Here is the point of two four. And here is the point of zero zero. So now remember that when I was doing this the the first time I did the where did I start? I did the the top curve minus the bottom, and then because these were in terms of y, I did the right curve minus the left curve. So I, I just need to, uh, well, okay, there went my screen for a moment. So hopefully that didn't cause any blip on the radar for you. But, uh, well, okay. So I have no idea what's going on here because at the moment I, my screen is flickering. So if you can still hear me, that's good. But I don't know why. My monitor just went out, so I have no idea what's going on. So in either case, I think my monitor is is back. So uh, let's see. So I have this is the area that I'm trying to find here, and then remember because this is in terms of x, this needs to be the top minus the bottom curve. So in this case, I'm lucky because the top curve of this region is always this this line, this line, the parabola never goes above the line, at least not between x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. All right, if I want to find the area over here, then the parabola would have, parabola would have been going above the line, but between negative 3 and 2, it did not. All right, and then here I have that the, the bottom curve is actually, in this region at least, is the is the parabola. So the equation of the the parabola was the y is equal to x squared and the equation of the line was y is equal to 6 minus x. So now I have the area is the integral from, so I want the lowest x value to the highest x value, so from negative 3 to 2 of the top curve, the, the line 6 minus x minus the bottom curve, the x squared, and then dx. All right, and then go ahead and integrate this. So I have integral from negative 3 to 2, and then I can just rewrite that negative x squared minus x plus 6. You don't have to, but it, I, I just did. So, all right, so now let's go ahead and integrate this here. So the integral of negative x squared is negative x to the third over three, then of x is negative x squared over two, and then of six is six x, and I'm evaluating that from negative three to two. And then let's use the fundamental theorem of calculus here. So I have something minus something else here. So I'll substitute in the two first, and then the negative three second, and then subtract here. So I have, let's see, negative 2 to the third over 3 minus 2 squared over 2 plus 6 times 2 minus negative negative 3 to the third over 3 minus negative 3 squared over 2 plus 6 times negative 3. So I am left with the uh, negative 8 over 3 minus 4 over 2 plus 12, then minus negative 27 over 3 minus a 9 over 2 minus 18 and then what is this going to what is this going to be here this is going to be uh, believe it or not this is also i think it's also 125 over 6 so i i don't want you to think that every problem here has the same answer but this one also happens to be 125 over 6 all right so 125 over 6 all right, so now let's go ahead and move on to another one unless you have any questions. But I, again, don't think that this is too hard. The hardest part is setting them all up. So if I look at the next one here, then the, the problem that I have is actually these both say you try it on it. So I might actually let you try those those two on your own then but so that we have time to do maybe these other ones here so let's go to this next one here 
So this says sketch the region bounded by the graphs of the algebraic functions and find the area of the region. So y is equal to 4 minus x squared and y is equal to 0. So y is equal to 0, that's an easy region to graph here. So that, that well, well, easy line to graph at least. So this will, well, in general, will make this region easy to graph. So y equals 0 is just the, the x-axis, all right? And then 4 minus x squared, well, that is a parabola, right? y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. So the y-intercept is 4. And then, and then the uh, x-intercepts are going to be at negative 2 and 2. So this is actually just... Uh, and it, it, you can be as accurate as you need to be, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? I'll try to be fairly accurate just for you, but something like this, right? All right, so I can tell that the region that I want to find is, the area of is just this small region in here. So this is y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. Now, because the functions are both in terms of x or solved for y, I'm going to use integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. And then I want to have the top curve minus the bottom curve. So the parabola is always on the top here and the, the y equals zero is always on the bottom. So it will be negative x squared plus four minus zero. All right, dx. So this is sort of like the very first one that I started out with. And then the x values are going from the negative uh, 2, 0 to the 2, 0. So from negative 2 to 2. And then you can go ahead and evaluate this if you would, would like to here. So that will be uh, negative x to the third over 3 plus 4x evaluate it from negative 2 to 2. So we have negative 2 to the third over 3 plus 4 times 2, then minus the, the negative, negative 2 to the third over 3 plus 4 times negative 2. In this one, let me go ahead and calculate this for you. So I have no idea what it is. So I, I, I'm just going to just use the the calculator here to figure out what this is so that I don't have to type all of this in. So negative x squared plus 4x uh, dx. So that integral ends up being as a fraction uh, negative 16 over, over, why is it negative? That doesn't make sense. Oh, I put an extra x there. Ah, see that, that, see, I put an extra x there. I told you that a negative area would not make sense. So then as a fraction, that ends up being 32 over 3. So 32 over 3. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that. All right. So now let's go ahead and try the next one here. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So this one is a little bit different because it has has four different equations that this is bounded by. So one of them is easy to draw. X is equal to negative one. So that would be right here. And one of them is X is equal to one. So that is right here. And one of them is Y equals X. So that is the 45 degree uh, line through the origin. So I'll try to go ahead and draw this as accurately as possible right here. So there it is. So now I just need to know where is this function here? All right, well, if I have y is negative x cubed plus 3, then if x is equal to negative 1, then I have a, well, negative negative 1 cubed plus 3, that will be 4. And if I have a 1, negative 1 cubed plus 3, that will be a 2. So negative 1 negative 1, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, so 1, 2 will be, where, well, <laughs> 1, 1, 2, so, well, all right, 1, 2 is right here, so 
I, I feel like this is, it's, you know, I, I, I don't want to like shortchange you, but this is, <laughs> this is a general shape of what it looks like. So, so this is the region that you are trying to find the area of. So in that region though, what you can tell is that the, hopefully you can tell at least, is that the, the cubic function is always a curve on the top of the yellow area and then the the line is always the function that is on the the bottom of the yellow area so i'm doing the yellow minus the the pink area uh, uh, the pink curve all right so this area will be since these were functions in terms of of x now area from all right so x is going from negative one to one so essentially all that these two lines did was give us our bounds for the x's here so it looked a little bit more intimidating than it really was but you see that without these two vertical lines the x is equal to negative one and x is equal to one that this yellow region would have actually been unbounded all right so just try to uh remember that also so just um yeah so try to remember that that is what's going on here so now we have the top curve the yellow one so negative x to the third plus three minus the bottom curve the the line the pink one x dx and then i will rewrite this in descending order so it's integral from negative one to one of negative x cubed minus x plus three dx then find the antiderivative, so it's negative x to the fourth over four minus x squared over two plus three x, evaluate it from negative one to one. And then because we are running out of time here, I'll just use the calculator again here. So um, math and then the integral, and I want from negative one to one of negative x to the third minus x plus three dx and this will give me six so that area that yellow area is equal to six all right so now i i feel like that is enough for this unless you want to see more i i feel like i have given you a general idea of what you need to do the only thing that you really do need to watch out for are are regions like the first one that I I had or the are this one the you try it one because if you look here for this part of the shaded area you have to do the 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 blue curve minus the the orange one and then over here you have to do the the orange minus the blue all right so if you have composite regions like that where the curve changes halfway in the middle then you have to do two integrals so just remember that th this one would actually be right something like integral from uh, zero to to one of the so the the cubic functions was the, the blue one so x minus one cube minus x minus one dx and then you would have to add that to the integral from one to two of the the x minus one and then minus the x minus one cubed dx and then you would find the area so just try to remember that if you have a composite area like that that you separate the parts correctly and don't subtract in the wrong order so that's pretty much it for this section and all i wanted to tell you about areas of regions in the plane so let me stop this here